The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Welcome back to the Element 14 community. I'm Lorraine Underwood from the UK, and this week I'm going to build an RFID pocket money tracker for my kids. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. In our family, we have two kids, and each week they get pocket money. And sometimes when they're in the shop, they want to spend that pocket money, but they never have it on them, and they have no idea how much they have in total. They don't no, they don't have to keep a, like a running total and neither do I or my husband because they gain pocket money and they spend it so quickly it's impossible to keep track. So we're going to create an electronic solution to this problem. Do you have a similar problem in your household? How would you keep track of it? If you go to the Element 14 community you can speak to me about this build and share your solutions. What I'm going to do is build a RFID pocket money system. So each of my kids is going to have like a bank card and it's going to store their amount on it, how much they have. And they'll be able to scan this with a scanner at home and that will tell them how much they have. I will be able to add money to the card, take away money to the card. So there will, be need, there will need to be some sort of security into this system. Let's kind of design the RFID scanner itself first. Okay, so we need a RFID scanner. So they tend to be long with some pins sticking at the end like that, um, kind of like a circle in the middle. And we need a screen to tell us how much there is. Um, I really like um, seven segment displays. So I'm thinking of four seven segment displays like that. Maybe they could display words as well. Um, I have a, a board exactly in mind for this. Then we're gonna need some buttons. So we've got four amounts. Now my kids are under 10, they're not gonna go over 99 pounds or else there's something wrong and they've got more money than me. So we only have these four displaying. Um, so I learned from the clock video that it takes forever to press a button constantly. So each of these buttons is going to increase or decrease each of these values. So this is tens of tens, single tens, tens of pennies, single pennies. So you imagine the decimal point is like there and each of these buttons will increase and decrease them. Uh, we'll use the two side buttons. Again, I've got a board in mind for this. Um, so this will change it from plus to minus and this will be kind of like a, an enter key. Um, I think that's all we need kind of hardware wise. We'll obviously need some RFID cards and some kind of tags or tags. Um, one for each of the kids, then one for each of the admins. So kind of four all together. So buttons, RFID scanner, screen i'm gonna go with a raspberry pi board for the controller let's look at some of the items then that i've chosen so our rfid scanner that's pretty standard um, if you look at the number rc522 it works with any kind of microcontroller actually um, or any kind of computer so arduino or raspberry pi i've seen it working on I'm gonna go for the Raspberry Pi for this project. So I'm gonna use um, a Pi Zero W. I'll show you the header I've got on that in a second. Then here's my seven segment display. This is called a four letter fat from Pimeroni. Here are my buttons. These are touch buttons from Pimeroni again. So this is called a touch fat. Then no RFID scanner is complete without a buzzer to make the pip noise. And the reason I've gone for this kind of setup, these fats, is because I'm gonna use this, also um, from Pimeroni. So this is called a fat stack, and <laughs> they have such great names. It's all soldered up already. You usually get it 
Um, you can actually buy it like this, buy it as pre-soldered, but you can you can also buy it without all the headers, so you can choose kind of the gaps between. You can either you, know, you take that one out, you don't have to have that one in, um, and you basically just place all your fats on here along with your Raspberry Pi. So you can leave that here. They give you um, a ribbon cable if you wanted to kind of put your pie on there and, and move it somewhere else. So it's, it's quite a static um, structure, you know, it makes everything long, but it just means everything works, <laughs> which I really like the idea of. So I'm just gonna attach probably my buttons to the bottom, my screen to the top, uh, my scanner in the middle somehow. So I'm gonna use uh, jumper wires from the, for this one. And then the pie, I should probably make the pie part of it, just leave the pie there. So it kind of all looks like that. So it's just one device and I could put a case around it. So mm, it's got a load of mounting holes in the bottom, so I can mount this, but case wise, I, I need to see that, I need to see that, and I need to see that. So there's no real room for a case. I could hide the pie, I suppose. Um, these are quite close. I'm not sure I should swap these around, but I can mount this very easily. And, oh, I need the buzzer probably coming off these pins as well somewhere. So maybe meant that to the side. I don't think this will fit as ne neatly like that because I can't send these pins, so it will have to kind of come up a bit. So maybe I can look at getting um, maybe some mounts for there. So there will be some design, um, some kind of case design for this, but this is it. This is it all on the fat stacker from Pimeroni using Pimeroni's um, different fats. I'm excited by this idea of just attaching everything to one board and it all works. You don't have to worry about resistors or anything like that or breadboarding. This is just all going to work on this one stack. Hopefully. So here's the um, fat stacker all set up. So I wired up my um, RFID scanner. I'll show you the wiring diagram for that in a second. I had to put the pie down the, the bottom because the power cable comes out so that I couldn't overlap the, the touch fat. Um, I've added a blanket. I'm not sure if that will work, but I just needed I just needed to add lights. Just needed to add lights to this project. I've pu plugged my SD card in, plugged power supply in, and we're going to connect to this now over my network um, from my laptop through Putty, and then start installing the the different libraries we need for the different fats. The wiring for the RFID is pretty simple. So these are the most commonly labeled pins on an RFID scanner. And this is where you need to connect them to the Pi. Um, the one I have, the one I've just bought from Fresnel, the pin called NSS is actually SDA. So you just have to make sure that you connect that to the right one. You ignore the pin called IRQ and VCC is the one that you connect to three volts. So VCC is quite a common name for power. Inside the fat then, let's have a look. Um, we have an examples folder. So we can just run one of these. Um, let's go with countdown. And I'll show you on a different camera what that looks like. Uh, okay, yeah, we need to enter some time, so let's enter just 10 seconds. And there it is, counting down. So that's work! Yay! <laughs> I don't know why I didn't expect that to work, but that's one of the libraries done. Let's get the touchpad up next. Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Okay, let's run that example then. So we're going back to the Pimeroni folder and the TouchFat examples. Uh, let's just run buttons, see what happens there. So this just um, lights up and displays what button I've just pressed. Cool. Ooh, D's not, ooh, D's not happy. Mm. I have to look at these pins again, maybe put the thing back on. I'm not sure why D isn't working there. D. 
but mostly that's working. <laughs> Now we have to get the RFID scanner working and unfortunately this isn't a FAT so we're gonna have to install some libraries and get download some test code. So you need to start by going into Raspberry Pi config and turn on SPI. This should be turned on based on what we installed from the Pimeroni FATs um, but just double check that. <laughs> Then you need Python um, spy dev for Python and Python 3. You need to clone the SpyPy library and go into that folder and install it again for Python and Python 3. Um, then this is the library that actually has your code in it that you want. So this you're going to clone this library and go inside that folder. And when you run, run Python read.py, it doesn't work. <laughs> So this is just a file that should just read um, RFID cards, but it doesn't. So let me show what we need to do to fix that. So the MFRC stuff is out of date. Um, let me just show you the difference between the original file and one that actually works. So it's down on kind of a self declaration on the init. So instead of saying spi.open, you need to say self.dev equals spi.open then on the write and the read, when you do SPI transfer, you need to say, so instead of just saying SPI transfer, you need to say SPI transfer self.dev um, on both of them. Also, this is written for Python 2, so you'll notice you'll have to change all the print statements to have um, brackets. So in the original, it was just print, but I've added brackets to them all. I'll put this file on the element 14 community um, once you've done that, it will run just fine. One thing I forgot to demo was the Blinkit library. So let me, can you guess which one of these I'm going to run? Um, let's just make sure that works before we start coding it. Woohoo! Okay, that works, perfect. I've also wired up the buzzer um, onto pin 26 and ground. And let me show you what the basic scripts do. So let's just read a card. So we can see this script just reads um, sector eight, whatever is in sector eight. It shows you the unique ID um, and that Reddit, there was no beep sound, which is a bit disappointing, but this is the default script. So let's edit this ourselves and get it working with all of these boards. I'll go through the code more in depth with you um, on the Element 14 community. So hop over there if you want to see the full code um, read by me. Before we can scan a card, we need to write the card. So we need to write whose card, um, whose tag this is. So let me show you that script first. So really, really quickly, um, what this does is it scans the card and reads it and then writes something out to it. So I'm going to create um, Max's Card. So child name equals max. So it's going to write the word max to se sector eight, not the pocket money amount. Okay, that's running. So let's scan max's tag. Okay, so you can see it's changed. Um, again, because it's invisible data, it's not that exciting to, to see. <laughs> but wait till you see. I promise it is more exciting when it starts reading from this tag. So let's go through that now. Okay, so Max is one of the people that's stored in our JSON file. So it's shown Max, his name, and the amount that he has. Um, I've just printed out the JSON file on the screen there. So you can see the duck has five pounds, um, but we're just worried about Max right now. Uh, let's go through the, the settings then. We're gonna add um, a couple of quid to Max, but it's just gone to done. So it does time out after a while. So it goes back to the scan screen. So let's scan Max again. Let's give him some money. We're going to add one pound to Max's account. And it's asking the admin to scan their card. So now 
when we scan Max's card, we should see £7.50. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> and that's it. Um, let's take away Max's money completely. Okay, so we're going to scan. Oh, we've already scanned Max. We don't need to scan him again. So we're going to subtract. £7.50. Yep. Confirm. Okay, let's go back to Max. Max has zero. And that's it. That's the pocket money system working. You can add money, you can take away money using the child card and using the admin card as well. So this needs to go somewhere safe. Um, let me demo the website to you next. Here's the website. It looks better in um, portrait mode because that's what it's designed for mobile. So let me just show you that now. Okay, so let's have a look and see how much Max has. Um, he should have zero because that's just what we <laughs> took away from him. Now this pin, um, I've given Max a pin, but I also have a, an admin pin. So yeah, Max has nothing. So using this website on my phone, I can change Max's balance. So we're out in the shop and he wants to buy something or someone's given him some money. Let's give him his, um, what was it, £6.50? And in the same way, we can take money away. And that works. And that works off the same JSON file that the Pi is reading. So the Pi does have to be online um, because it's reading this JSON file that's stored on this website. So they're both always in sync, which is great. The website's really simple to use. I'll put all the files, this is written in PHP. I'll put all these files on the Element 14 community if you want to have a look at them. So here's the build in situ. So this is the kitchen and we just put it on a shelf here. I've mounted it on this board um, and just decorated it with a load of stickers. Go to the Element 14 community for a full demo of this and a shopping list of everything you can buy. I am, I am very aware of how geeky I am, okay? And <laughs> I try not to be overly geeky in front of my kids. I don't want to embarrass them. I don't want to put them off being geeky by kind of overdoing it. Um, but with this project, I'm really happy to say that they love it. They were very excited when they first heard about it, the idea of having their own bank cards and the fact that they can scan their card and check their balance is just, they just love it. They really laugh when they do it. And we've been to the shop, so they were able to, to buy something with their own money, which kind of empowers them, I feel. Um, but also they can budget, you know, okay, I have this much, and I get this much every week and I need to, I'm saving up for a game. And that's great. That's exactly what I wanted them to do. I think this might only be like the second project that I've done that is still in use and that I can see still being in use in a few months time. The clock being the first one. How many projects have you built that are still in use? What's your ratio between projects you've built and projects that are still built? <laughs> Is it pretty low, I imagine, for a lot of us? If I was to start this project again, I would probably make my code more robust. So when I scan it as an admin, it crashes the program because I'm not in that JSON file. So I just need to put in um, some kind of checks and some try statements there so it doesn't crash because it's running all the time. It kind of needs to be a bit more robust than that so we don't mix up the cards. I'd also probably make the case a bit more, a bit better. I'd probably 3D print it so it's kind of more in like in a case rather than on a stand, which is what it's like now. Do you like the project? What do you think of it? Let me know your thoughts on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash presents. I'll be there to geek out with you. Till next time.